All right, major stone shield potions should be... Oh, God, I'm gonna have diarrhea again. Uh, eh. You can't go to the bathroom. You're stacking Sunder armor. It's okay. Ma'am, bathroom! What, hon? Bathroom! Bathroom! Oh, that's a big boy, isn't he? All right, Kenny, drink your elixir of the mongoose. I'm now going to use Mocking Blow. Traveling to Japan, I realize that this place, this USA we're always chanting about, is a filthy and disgusting country. <laughs> we were in Japan for seven days. Not only did I not encounter a single dirty bathroom, the bathrooms in Tokyo and Kyoto are cleaner than our operating rooms here. <laughs> Everywhere you go, the bathrooms are clean, they don't smell bad, they have those toilets that wash you from the inside out. Oh. 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 Okay, how much? A woman named Patricia Silva took a photo of a trans person in there as a guy pretending to be a gal, shaving his face. That was our first clue. Planet Fitness is defending the man in the woman's locker room, the man with the penis, rather than the child sitting in the corner with a towel wrapped around her. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. You can't have an opinion on your platform that is not pro a country that is not ours. Hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's crazy. I wish. So wait, is I the Daily Wire time. an American media platform or is it an Israeli oh. media platform? <laughs> I'm just asking. This guy's cooking. It's now spun into a debate about whether the Daily Wire is pro free speech. Uh, the accusation is you are until it comes to Israel. How do you respond? I mean, what I will say is that we have a wide variety of positions on Israel right now inside the Daily Wire. Matt Walsh, obviously, is another one of the hosts at the Daily Wire. He and I wildly disagree about what America's Israel policy should be. Matt is much more isolationist. He basically believes the United States has no no real interests in the Middle East, and thus the United States should not be providing material support to anyone, including the state of Israel. You know, Matt, obviously, is well within you know the, the, the sort of group of hosts that we have here at the Daily Wire. So clearly, whatever is going on is not about Israel specifically. Now speaking, Horcio Gutierrez, Senior Executive Hello, Vice President. I didn't even get to finish his name. Good actually, morning. Though. Sorry, Hi. it's playing. Okay. Patient advocate for Do No Harm, <laughs> the group that seeks accountability in the medical profession. I am presenting proposal number seven titled Report on Gender Transitioning Compensation and Benefits, sponsored by what? National Legal and Policy Center. Disney pays for gender transition intervention. This is how they started. <laughs> what? Discriminate based on gender identity under EEOC regulation. Few moments later. Pause. Share this. What? Go look up. Uh, Disney stock just dropped. <laughs> oh no! After no, during how bad? This? Sure. Usually oh, not. Oh my god. You want. Yeah. Within. 13 minutes within 13 minutes yeah that's eastern yeah. time so uh uh-oh uh-oh pescadio uh, a piece of, of your appearance on bill maher's show yeah i'm a, a a clean and sober guy like it's very important that I maintain my sobriety. How long, how long have you been? Uh, approaching 16 years. They, 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 you know, his thing is he smokes pot the whole time while he interviews people, and and I, I said he had happily go on there, but but could he, while I'm on, out of respect for my sobriety, could he refrain from smoking he pot? He said no. He said no. That's a deal breaker. I love him. And, and We're so high right now. Podcast wow. is called They're not low. I saw the news when you did. I wasn't gonna make a video about it. The main thing is to protect these characters, make sure that they still continue to, to live in the way that you created them. Uh, excuse me, I believe I asked you to put a chicken in this and make her gay. Absolute, complete insanity. And the idea that some of us think we're really great people, but in the real world we're not, we're terrible people. Stupid decision after stupid decision after stupid decision. Yeah, put a chicken in, make her gay. Or you we can make bad choices. Well, you make but, bad choices, but you run your life in a very selfish way, 
and you think you're doing good when you're actually not. You'd better put a chicken in it and make it f***ing gay as f***. At the same time, those people who may not play by the rules because they're selfish and greedy turn themselves into evil people who don't care about other people. Look, I don't want to have to say it, but I think the problem is Kathleen Kennedy. There you go. <laughs> If you like the ballet, check out the girls' introduction to ballet class with Planet Fitness. Entrance for all girls guaranteed. Must be over six feet and 200 pounds to enter. Planet Fitness, where men make the best women. For some people, the world has never been more divided. Here at Starbucks, we serve the community by bringing people together. Look, there's a black lady helping an old white lady to cross the street. Through our large windows, we see humanity for what it can be. This holiday season, come and view things the way we do. Starbucks, a little kindness goes a long way. 10% of all proceeds go to Hamas. Where is everybody? Security. Hey, Evan, it's uh, Mike Milch up in systems. Um, attention Twitter staff. Hey, it's Jesus. Please give me your full attention. Those who could come to work, but did not come to work, their resignations have been accepted. It has been determined that those of you who remain have the potential for greatness. All um, to the officers will soon be locked down. Now it is time to separate the weak from the hardcore. accepted. Jones, how are you? Jeremy, I love the quartering. I love Salty Cracker. I love it uh, all. Salty Cracker, how are you? Boy, that just sounds crazy. I can't believe I'm joined by the Roseanne Bar. I'm so glad. You're very welcome. Nice to be here. Who is Jeremy and what is the quartering? Well, 
I'm a commentator, I guess. I'm a Midwestern dude who uploads four to five videos a day covering everything from big tech to YouTube, to technology, to pop culture, movies, video games, whatever's going on in the world, I've got you covered. We're still on YouTube right now. <laughs> uh, but I just decided to just quadruple down in the face of losing nearly $30 billion. Reimagine, I'm sorry, again, I missed it again. I'm out of practice. Reimagining. They are literally trying to put a content creator in prison uh, for their opinions. You're gonna find interviews on my channel, you're gonna find deep dives, you're gonna find breaking news, you're gonna find long-term coverage. Everything you need to stay in touch, you're gonna find on The Quartering. If you're watching this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. I really think you're gonna find one or two videos a day that you really enjoy. Happy Monday, everybody. How's it going, Mahler? Hello. <laughs> feels, <laughs> feels weird not talking to, to someone before a show goes live, you know, but it's fine with me. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, no, uh, no pre show. Uh, I forgot to tell you that I just start the pre show and then we like, I try to start at 4 30 because otherwise everyone spams a chat and calls me late and gay. So I have oh, to. Oh, yeah. I get that know. all the time. <laughs> yeah. I can't be late. Well, it feels like a long time coming i'm really glad you could come on on such short notice how have you been yeah you know good just getting on with work i basically spend my days editing all the time be it a prep work for talking about a movie or a video i'm going to break it down video i'm trying to help someone out with video for first channel second channel you know how it is i uh, do yeah i do well my videos work. are uh not three hours long typically <laughs> uh which i'm told is a bad thing i'm told uh that long man bad mm -hmm. um, for having long videos by the way if you're in the, the chat if you're just trickling in i'm joined by mauler you may recognize him obviously from his namesake channel on youtube but also he's a part of efap as well as when you say second channel you're talking about Mueller. yeah that one yep so um all of his channels are linked in the description down below um and i hope that you'll take a second and subscribe if you're not already, then following him on Twitter, everything's all linked down below. While while we're kind of um, just starting out here, any uh, any movies you're looking actually looking forward to uh, this year? Funnily enough, it's more TV shows. We got House of the Dragon on the way, which I'm very very into. Hoping for a a banger season. If it's as good as the first one, I'll be happy with that. We got a Arcane at the end of the year. I'm hoping for another good season on top of that. No one expected the League of Legends animated show to be good, but um, you know, good surprise, that sort of stuff. Yeah. As for films, it's kind of a mixed bag of just roll the dice and hope with a lot of stuff. Um, you know, these days there's a lot of, I mean, you probably talk to many people who've got this sentiment of media is not in a great place right now. And, um, I think that you know, go by like uh, trailer dislikes at an all time high. <laughs> like people yeah, just yeah. Being like tired Aggr of this, tired of that. You know, <laughs> aggregate trailer dislikes are probably probably truly at an all time high. I think um, I still, you know, I wanted to start out with a bit of a white pill and say, hey, anything you're looking forward to, because obviously there's a lot of stuff that sucks. But you know, speaking of House of the Dragon, I think that was a sneaky success. I don't think mm. you know. I, I don't think, I mean, obviously people are like, okay, Game of Thrones was a big deal, obviously, but um, it could have went the other way and been like Ring of Power um, yeah, yeah, and, and been just hated by, by people. And I think that show not only was well-liked by everybody, there was a little rabble in the beginning about like, oh, they're, they're making political decisions or whatever, but really the show just ended up being pretty solid and had excellent, solid viewership. Um. I recently got into the show From, which I thought was really good. Um, oh, yeah. I, I don't know when that was out originally, but I watched the first few seasons of that. I'm excited. There's a lot of good TV 
um i'm looking forward to um uh outer range uh the Mm -hmm. next season of that i thought that show was really good um there's a lot of good tv i think hollywood is kind of in this weird position outside of the you know pissing everybody off stuff (laughs) like (laughs) they forced us to all get used to streaming and uh you know they said you got to buy all these streaming services well, okay, cool. We did that. Everyone's got an average of, I think, 3.5 or something like that. And now they're like, well, why won't you go to the movies? Um, well, <laughs> we're already paying for, you know, we was, it's, it's a transition period where I'm not sure that theaters have, you know, the, the brightest future. What do you think? What do you think about that? You think that, you know, I, I certainly think we're going to see a contraction, a, a number of theaters, but you think yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to survive? <laughs> their plan to transition over to streaming did extreme damage. That's the, they, they, they intended to do it, and it's done. Uh, whether or not it was as effective as they wanted it to is a whole conversation, but um, moving everything over to streaming has now convinced a lot of people when they were forced in COVID times to basically not go out in a lot of ways. But they were like, well, I guess when you weigh it up, right? You're like, this movie's coming out. We could go to the theater or we could stay at home. It's like, maybe we'll stay at home, I guess. You know, this is the... Do I have to go for the car ride? Don't have to organize everything. Don't have to. The tickets can be insane prices depending on where you are. They um, are getting insane. Even I don't live in the big city, but it's still, you know, for my wife and me to go, it's like fifty, sixty dollars US. You know, but you know, we get the popcorn, we get the drink, whatever. I mean, but it's still like twelve dollars for a movie ticket, and people just, you know, it's like okay, well, you know what? I, I don't have sticky floors at home. I don't have somebody coughing on me at home. I think that streaming uh really removed a lot of th- theaters survived on fomo a lot it's in particular marvel is a great example mm. like p- people just didn't want p- people piled in the theaters every time a new marvel movie came out then we got used to streaming and it's like ah i'll just watch it when it comes out on streaming eh. you know like there's oppenheimer there's barbie there's top gun maverick but everything else in between people are just sitting at home and waiting and i think it's probably only going to get worse I think that uh, a lot of people tend to go one or two directions of like, oh, can we bring it back? You have like a lot of YouTubers who want to bring it back to its glory days. Then a lot of YouTubers, uh, or just people in general, who would say something like, I think we're actually heading for a place where theaters might die outright. You know, something dramatic on both ends, like a Mm. full reinvigoration or destruction, when maybe the reality could be a lot more boring, which is that it shrinks, and then that's its new position. Well, theaters have to diversify their, their, their income rates. For example, <clears throat> I went to see the only reason I went to see Frozen Empire was mm. for that stupid popcorn bucket <laughs> that looked like a ghost trap that I think was th- almost $30. Wow. And, you know, <laughs> would I have, I probably wouldn't have seen Frozen Empire in the movie theater. Um, I, I'm like an old school. Ghostbusters guy that I didn't think there ever needed to be anything after the second Ghostbusters movie, especially after Ramis passed away. And uh, then like, okay, well, Regal Theater sold that Slimer bucket. All this stuff is, you know, we've had the collector's cups, but I think theaters are finding different ways to monetize, which I think will help them last a little bit longer. You know, you can only charge people so much money for popcorn. You have to you know, the Dune, the Dune sex toy popcorn bucket, you know, like that thing became a meme, but I bet you that thing wasn't cheap. And the only place you could get it was in the theater. It's almost like the Steelbook DVD thing. Like, you know, oh, well, yeah. I saw the movie, but did you get the, did you get the meme product that also was available in theaters only? I think they have to do that if they want to, if they want to hang on. Well, there was so much publicity about the Dune bucket, right? Like, the- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I was not, I've said this to my viewers before, and at the risk of insulting anybody, I'm not saying that Dune bad, Dune is bad. I'm not saying that. I just am not a Dune guy. Mm-hmm. So when like the second, I saw the first Dune movie and I was like, okay, great. Fine, a fine movie. But I, I just didn't, it didn't hit for me like it did in the second one. But like, I really wasn't interested in it. And the second time came out, or the sequel, I'll just like, I'll stream it. But I'll tell you what, I wanted that bucket. I wanted the I wanted that just for the memes, you know, the the Dunussy popcorn bucket or whatever people call it. So I think they're doing more of that. Maybe we are highlighting then the the savior of the theater is the popcorn bucket. Popcorn buckets, merch. 
I mean, Marvel's going to have to do something. Marvel's going to have to do something to get people. Oh yeah, for sure. The theater, like um, obviously, I, I, I've like been deeply tracking their downfall because we uh, is this moment that my fans like to remind us of on EFAB that back in I, I want to say twenty nineteen. We have a conversation. I think someone may have super chat or something saying, you know, what would cause the destruction of the MCU? We basically said at the time, like, that's nah, not going to happen. You'd have to have like 10 bad movies in a row. Yeah. 2019 was what was what was out in that era? Was well, so you got the Marvel end game. End yeah. Game. Oh, it was at the peak. We didn't Somewhere know. Somewhere around then. Be. It could have been soon after. But the point was that they were so big and had so much momentum. They would have to have a series of really bad films, like loads of them. And then, of course, they did. And then they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right. It, sometimes the impossible does happen. I think, ultimately, when you look at, as a layman, who someone who doesn't study as deeply as you, sometimes it's like, they just put out a bunch of mid-movies. Some mm -hmm. of them were poor. Um, some of them were okay, but none of them were good. And when you pay $20, oh, man, I remember... Well, it's just proof. I mean, when Aquaman made a billion dollars, you knew that like they could, the superhero of genre was yeah out of control. Fire. They could do anything. Yeah, they put it's Captain Marvel, Aquaman, billion, billion. Like, and these movies are mid at best, and like a lot of the Marvel movies really are. They had a good run. I thought Civil War was really, really good. Some of the Avengers movies before that were really good. Um, the early Thor movie. Uh, not the first Thor movie. Like a couple of the Thor movies were good until they made them too many. They made Thor the butt of the joke. And then like they made that the whole movie. I didn't think people wanted to see that. And that last Thor movie was. That's the thing. They they could have held their little good times for a lot longer, right? You know, everyone talks about how interesting uh, Punished Thor was. The dark Thor that yeah. decided, you know, fuck this sort of thing. We got him for what? 10 minutes at the end of one movie. And then he became Fat Thor. Then he became Clown Thor, and it was just like, you could argue, it's like, oh, that's not the reason the MCU fell apart. It's like, no, that's just one pillar that's gone, and then you look at each of every other one, they do it to all of them. Uh, it's, it's systematic, it's insane, and the the talent in... If you look back at Phase 1 and 2 and stuff, they hire very veteran writer-director teams yeah. <clears> designed <throat> based on their histories and experience and everything. You know, you crank forward now, and you have people who it's like, oh, I, I can see in their history they wrote one episode of one TV show uh, a year ago that I've never the heard of. The director for Captain Marvel two had done Candyman, a remake of Candyman, and that's mm -hmm. it. I think like a little independent film, and it was like Nia DaCosta, I think her name was. Yes, I was like, how in the heck are you the director of a billion dollar movie? Now I get it. I think modern era, they hire directors based on things that they can promote. That's a big part of it. Um, you know, all woman director, all woman team, all this and that. And then like somewhere along the lines, they forgot to hire people who are good at their jobs. And this is common with not just Marvel, but Star Wars too. I mean, who would have thought right now, who would, who, would, I don't, I guess you might have, I never would have thought that we'd be at a point where no one gives a damn about Star Wars. <laughs> that that's a, it's funny i spoke to uh star wars theory a couple of times right and he was he's less familiar with marvel's side of things so when he describes like this unprecedented insane thing they've done with star wars i'm sitting there like yeah that's what they did with marvel the exact same <laughs> thing the exact, exact same, same thing. thing they spammed out a bunch of bad movies and then they turned on the fans when we didn't see them it's literally exactly the same model that disney uh, yeah star wars marvel same trajectory new movie every year which is fine if they are bangers. Yeah, well, you know. I assume you know, like the, the plan for Marvel was, I think, four or five per year, and Star Wars was one per year, but both have just crashed and burned. They can't keep up on that. <laughs> Star Wars hasn't had a movie now since 2019. Uh, well, I think they're so much afraid one per year, right? Oh, definitely afraid, yes. Yeah, I think, you and I think, I, I don't, I feel like this is less of a hot take now that people have had more time, but like Rogue One is the best Star Wars movie that Disney put out, in my opinion. I and, agree with uh, that. Yeah. And like they didn't, they just abandoned that whole like kind of opportunity to expand on the world. Maybe they said, okay, let's put this stuff on Disney Plus. But I thought Rogue One was awesome. And I thought all the rest of the movies were very, very mid, mid to mid to bad. 
The and sequels, uh, like like TFA's reputation has just plummeted over the past few years. Um, yeah. When when TLJ came out, you'd found a lot of people saying that TFA was ruined by it, but it, you don't really find those people anymore. And most people just say all three sequels were awful in their own ways. Yeah. Yeah. In the time, you're a little bit a prisoner of the moment. And then, a bit, yeah. Yeah. And then you go back and you think that that was the funniest thing for me is I go back, I'm like, yeah, I'd watch Rogue One again, but that's it. That's the only Star Wars Disney movie that I'd probably watch again willingly. <laughs> and like now, I mean, they spammed out a hundred shows on Disney Plus. I think the average fan doesn't even have any clue what the hell is even out. Like no, Mandalorian no, was good. It was big. It was a cultural phenomenon. They brought spent a bunch of money to bring us um CGI Luke. It was this huge thing. And then poof. I it was, that was it. It peaked. Yeah, the Gina Carano stuff, which I always like to say, and like I promise I wouldn't drag you into hard politics, so I won't. But the Gina Crano thing was undeniable in our bu- in my bubble, for example. Not everybody is terminally. No, yeah, no, I, I was I was there for all of it in terms of uh, the hypocrisy of it as well, right? Because Pedro Pascal made no less controversial opinions public. Very than she similar, did. yeah. But it, like they try to sell it's the concept of saying something controversial as opposed to a particular direction. Um, which I don't think anybody really believes. I don't even think Disney, like they, they, they probably knew what they were they, saying was bullshit. Yeah, they knew what they were saying, they, but they, they they were stuck. They they couldn't, you know. I mean, the Disney actually had a couple of people that Evangeline Lilly too had some, uh, yeah, you know, some you know, and you know, some kind of pro freedom stuff that they didn't like. Didn't uh, Letitia? Is it Letitia Wright had something to say about? Yes, she did. Vaccines, is it? Yeah, yeah, they both did. Um, she escaped major backlash um, because, well, uh, she gets more leeway than Gina Carano. Um, but like, yeah, they all had these 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 kind of co- mini controversies that stacked up, and then you finally were like, ah, screw it, I'll go see it, and then you watch whatever it was, and it sucked. Is there any good Star Wars property on right on well, plus right now? So on what you were saying, what, what what I find super interesting, of course, is that anything that I am particularly or not particularly interested in isn't a good tell to me of what the the public are necessarily. True. But I do have family who I consider to be quite, they're quite invested in film. They're the reason that I am. And so, you know, my sister who collects all kinds of media and stuff, when I say to her, like, oh, you know, y- you looking forward to the next uh, Marvel or Star Wars thing? And she'll just be like, I have no idea what, like, what they're out. Having. And, um, uh, you know, asking her about, say, Ahsoka, she'll just be like, who or what is that? And then I'll be like, is it a character from Star Wars, new Star Wars TV show? And she'll be like, no, I got nothing. I have no idea. That's wild. Yeah. So she's tuned out then, too. Yeah, and, and I too think much. that's got to be representative of a huge amount of the audience, which um, I was saying this to, uh, probably not Star Wars series, again, so we ran a temporary podcast about sort of Star Wars, how... Ahsoka is very popular within the Clone Wars, Star Wars fans. Yes. But outside yeah. of it, a lot of people have no fucking clue who that is. And so when she yeah. comes in in a TV show that people aren't even that interested in seeing anyway, and she turns out to be a very important character, she is the apprentice of Anakin Skywalker, a lot of people be like, what the fuck? Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when did this yeah. happen? Yeah, she's been, yeah, she's been around for tw- 20 years and, and uh, a lot of people see that as indicative of the awful choices at Disney. But the fact is, they've played a lot of their cards. You'd be like, why didn't they do an Obi Wan show? It's like, oh, they did. Why didn't they do like a Boba Fett side show? It's like, they did. They did. Why not yeah. do like uh, sequels where they, you see what happens to Han, Luke? And it's like, they they did. Uh, yeah. What's left? I mean, w- what was hilarious was they bought the Star Wars universe and they did nothing to expand it, almost nothing except for Rogue One. Well, like, did you see Andor? I did not see Andor. Was it good? You, if you like Rogue One, you should probably like Andor. It's similar creators because uh, Tony Gilroy worked on Rogue One. Okay. And it's supposed to be a prequel show to uh, Rogue One. And it's it's very much made in a very different way than the Kenobi, Boba Fett style shows were. The thing, the reason why you've probably not seen it and those people don't care about it is because it regards a spinoff of a spinoff. It's like, I don't even know who Cassian Andor is. Uh but you'll find if you check out any circles within Star Wars, that is the highest rated thing that Disney Star Wars have created. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm willing to give it a try. It's interesting. I think part of it is that people just got beat into submission. And mm. it's like you, you, you like taste, you go to a buffet, you taste three things and they all suck. You're not as willing, you're not like 
Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I get people telling me all the time they don't want they don't can't be asked to watch Andor. I was like, totally fair. I don't blame you at all. I'll yeah. you know, I report back to what is good, what is bad. I try and recommend based on that. But if you say to me, like, I'm still not gonna watch it, that's <laughs> absolutely your choice. Yeah, I mean, at some point, if people have made drawn a line in the sand, it doesn't matter if it's good or not. I'm still open minded in terms of what could be out there, even for Marvel, although I don't know what they can do because like similar to Star Wars, they've done it all. There's four Guardians of the Galaxy movies. We don't, how many more do we need? Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is 100 years old. And he, just, <laughs> he just came out too and he's like, oh yeah, I would do Iron Man again. Yeah, no shit. You probably would because Disney would pay you $40 million. Yeah, they pay him a shit ton. <laughs> yeah, like they need him to be Iron Man again. I think they, I don't know. Why do you think, like, there's so many well first of all disney should be focusing on x-men in my opinion but i mean deadpool like how many more deadpool movies can they make this third well, you one say focus on x-men that's the next phase that's what we're going to be ramping up because uh they get baited at the end of the new marvel uh, captain marvel movie so yes they did with um beast right they're on the way <laughs> yeah and i hope they don't suck but you know i think but even like they try to bring back wolverine what do they do bring back the original actor who's a hundred years old like that's not sustainable a lot of these guys you know robert downey jr is in the mcu for 15 years and or 10 years probably right at least 10 roughly 10 and now they have to reintroduce all new versions of characters that people have kind of pre-programmed it's like how are they going to replace iron man or well, I mean, they've done it with Spider-Man three times, pretty successfully, to be fair, at least twice successfully. They try to do Iron Heart in the Black Panther sequel. Riri Williams, right? Supposed to be some form of a spiritual successor to Iron Man in the universe, though I don't know what they're thinking with that one. Uh, she's supposed to have her own TV show, I think. At some yeah, point. they tried to do. Um... Oh wait, no, Iron Heart is no. Who's the Hawkeye one they try to pass on to? That's Kate Bishop. That's yeah. Kate Bishop. Yeah, so they're trying to bring up these new stars, which are y, like for YA audiences, which I think is fine. I just, man, I, I feel, I, I don't want any more Hulk movies. I don't want any more Iron Man movies. I don't want 1,000-year-old Robert Downey Jr. who's like his, his flesh is falling off of his bones. Although it would actually work okay for Iron Man because, you know, the suit could do all the work. But, you know, I just, I think that they, they were too busy cashing in and they did not um, do a good enough job setting up the next class. Yeah, I think uh, any motivation to do with money that would guide you on particular creative choices was gone by the time we hit 2018 and 19. They thought no matter what we do creatively, we, we're going to make the money. So we don't need to worry about that. What else should we worry about? And some of the guiding choices for what decisions they have been making are insane. Like I go into a lot of the behind the scenes interviews, commentaries, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And just listening to them talk about the creative process is absolutely baffling. Like the approach with script writing is sad to say the least. It's almost like, um, how, I don't know, like they got lulled into this, like everything they were putting out was gold. So they had no reason to look inward. It's like, it's like they got completely caught off guard. And they put out Captain Marvel 2 was finally like the, oh, yeah, it's just dead now. Like they, there was, you know, Doctor Strange would still do OK. Mm. I think it did six, seven, six, seven hundred million. I think the Doctor Strange sequel, maybe a little more. Well, um, the question becomes, of course, what would it have done if it came out today? Because oh, even right. It yeah. wasn't even that long ago that it came. You, you're talking about the sequel, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, I imagine that even that because that's 2022, a lot happened in just two years. <laughs> yeah, probably of, uh, sub 500 million. I and, think so. Yeah. Well, the other part is like you know, one thing that they can't change that they're unwilling to change or haven't figured out is like the, the <laughs> you can't have 300 million dollar budgets anymore. Like you can make a superhero movie, but you can't spend 300 million on it because there's just not enough people out there willing to see it. And you know, I don't know what the budget for the Batman was, but I suspect it wasn't more than a hundred million. Um, Joker, which made a billion was only 50 million or yeah. something like that. Um, so you don't have to have all the crazy CGI. You can still have superhero movies without I think, all that um, insanity. Someone I discovered uh, the Batman, by the way, was 
surprisingly coming close is 185 million budget oh that's um, oh that's higher than i thought <laughs> yeah but that's still big. not 300 million and yeah something that i uh when you when i if anyone has seen my videos in the quantum mania one and um I, I know this about a lot of them the there's departments for like makeup costuming that sort of thing who get given a job it's like there's a sequence in a bar where we're gonna have loads of aliens it's like get to work and they do create incredible things and they put you know thousands of hours of work in theory into all this kinds of crazy effort and then we see them for about five ten seconds and that's right. it that's the scene right. done. and it's like how much did all of that cost and it's like oh who cares yeah <laughs> like, yeah just throw it out it's like it's 15 million and the, <laughs> yeah, the sad like... fact is you hear these artists being like right so i've been commissioned to create quantum creatures so i drew from this i looked at the comics for this i've actually looked at videos about like what the le the level of quantum stuff looks like trying to drag it into this 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 and you know i've created this 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 these are five examples we've tested them all out this is the actor he's really enthusiastic and you're just like fuck that's not in the movie that's only in a deleted scene <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, by the way, um, if you're tuned in, I'm joined by Mahler. All of his channels are linked in the description. He does his long-form deep dives on his main Mahler channel. But then on a second cha channel, which is uh, Every Frame of Pause, which is hilarious, um, and <laughs> short for EFAP, um, also a show he does with Rags and a few other people. Who else is on that show with you? It's me, Friggy, and Rags are the, uh, the main hosts. guys. But we usually yeah. try and circulate all kinds of people in to get different perspective yeah. and all that so efap um also an interesting podcast or show to tune into to get some deep dives on all these things and you know efap takes a lot of uh, what was the record now a full a three-hour video on a two-minute clip what was it exactly <laughs> <laughs> something like that yeah well I yeah. Mean, we, we recently covered like the acolyte trailer which i think is like a, a minute and we had an hour on it just talking about all the potential of it uh, our meme is that we talk a lot yeah yeah, that yeah, that is that is the meme, but it's usually pretty insightful stuff. So well, I check that, that out and follow him on uh, Twitter at uh, Mahler ninety three. There were a couple of things, speaking of Star Wars related, that I wanted to get your thoughts on, like the IP. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I know that and you mentioned you try to keep your stuff a little like more escapist, and that's good. So I recommend as a palate cleanser to enjoy his content, especially. You know, if you have like uh, a week to kill, you can watch one of his videos. Um, well, um, I'm sure you remember a time, even if it was a, a, a mere 10 years ago, that when discussing media, we used to talk about the media as opposed to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, was that is true. Yeah, that is true. <clears throat> Why do you do you obviously you've been covering this long enough. What's your opinion on how we got to where we are, where everything is so adversarial now? You know, you see the Star Wars Outlaws. This is a movie or video game that comes out. You no, know, there's a trailer that comes out tomorrow, I think. Should be a big deal. E you know, it's Star Wars property, which already makes me, you know. Eh. But like before it comes out, sure enough. Oh, a community manager has said some weird stuff about white people, TM. Or whatever, the, <laughs> you know, whatever the case is. And I just, I don't like... How did we get here and how much of an anchor do you think this this is? In my world, I probably overstate it, right? Sometimes I'm like, yeah, we're killing these guys, ha. Huh? And then like really this whole like online movement of stuff isn't necessarily always as big as we might think. But it's got to have some impact, right? Like th I think we've seen some breaking points. Yeah. Uh South Park was quite a big sort of eye opener for how this has gone further mainstream than a lot of us maybe have assumed noticing patterns you know what i mean you can't they, they kind of keep this up for so long before somebody noticed something and it's getting more and more recognition and frankly i'd be more happy if more people are able to call stuff like racist stuff what it is like you know if, if someone says like there should be less white people working on a project be like wow that's just that's bizarre yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah like i i feel like when you see stuff like that it's like um i'm taking am i taking crazy pills or this feels racist and then like um you know again like, and just so I'm clear, if they said that about black people, that's wrong too. If they said that about Asian people, that'd be wrong too. Yeah. Like, you need, you know, more of the right people working on, on these projects. But maybe, you know, I know we know that when we look at Disney, for example, all these big companies, they do have different priorities because they are publicly traded. They have all these weird initiatives that aren't about making better movies, that are more about making movies with the right people and the right cast. And look at all the hate that 
I always point this out, like Kelly Marie Tran. Remember all the hate that was like essentially fabricated by the media. Oh, everyone's harassing Kelly Marie Tran. No, her her character just sucked ass. Yeah, and, and like, she, she was underserved by her character. Yeah, she was fine. She didn't have any of these weird like white people bad posts or. But I remember she went on Good Morning America and they like forced her to be like, yeah, people are harassing me. I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't see any of that. I went to her Instagram, not a single comment. I went, you know, I'm, I don't know what you're talking about, but it became like this marketing tool, like own the chuds, buy a ticket to see this movie. And I just, <laughs> I was like, I don't, I mean, I know I said it at the time, like, okay, great, cool. Um, when this happens and it has, and the chuds aren't going to see her movies anymore. Who are you get? You know, like w- now, who are you going to blame? Well, there are a lot of these people that they didn't want to see on screen or working for them that were propping up these movies. I don't know how many of that, how much of that normie audience, like it's probably le- it's less than I think, and but more than like you said with South Park, that was very shocking. I thought, holy shit, like they actually named her. I was, uh, I said this on, I think it was FNT. I was actually hoping for a few more shots to be taken at sort of people like us in that episode. They really, they just went hard on the other side as far as I was concerned. Because I don't know if you saw it, you probably did. But a lot of discussion about that episode, a lot of people said like the the Chud type people don't realize how much this episode makes fun of them. And I was like, I was waiting for it, man. I was 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 happy to see it. Yeah, usually South Park is even handed. And I would have expected like, Literally, South Park to have like a, a cartoon version of somebody that looks like me sure, making yeah. YouTube videos, being like, man, and then like having Nazi flags or something. Like, I, I would have expected something like that. I'm going to see wrong. Mahler defeats detractors simply by being long. Like, whenever I get into spats with Mahler haters, it's just a consistent theme of them straight up admitting they won't even watch his videos. So they cannot back their accusations. That is a wonderful grift you figured out. <laughs> they, but, they've, they've actually made that claim that I make them long <laughs> so people can't watch them. But of course, at that point, then why claim they're awful? Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> just you don't did just you, don't talk about me if that, you know. Did you see um Quentin reviews? You thought you did a lot. <laughs> His video on the Beverly Hillbillies was like 40 hours long. He um what in the hell did he just put episode after episode re-upload it because it's like fair use now or something? There's no I way know, he was I, narrating that long. I don't know. I, I that that one I didn't believe. I thought it was like a April Fool's thing, but no, it's like, no, it's real. And it's real. I had to click into it because I was like, I thought it was a meme, like in defense of you. I was like, <laughs> okay, like I didn't. I'm like, does YouTube even let you upload videos that long? Yeah. And then well, I'm like, no, it is 40 hours long. And I, I click through it, and it's actual. Wait a minute, it is a meme. Wait, no, it's no. A it's, start... I think it's real. It's is. I'm not because no offense. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> of but, course not. Um, no, I get it. I think it's. I, I think um he put that time stamp in the thumbnail, but it's not actually that young, long. Long. Well, it says sure it, it says it's an hour. No, that's a day. Oh shit! It is a day. <laughs> A day and 14 hours long. Yeah, no way I'm watching it, but it's it looks like he has basically un... Well, so I'd have to have someone confirm it, but I assume it's an almost unbroken like recording of a stream of consciousness, and then they add visuals on top. Unless, um, of course, it is all scripted and all redrafted and all read out as an analysis on the Beverly Hillbillies, in which case, congratulations. Uh, well, it's not the easiest be... thing to do. I think that it's just a because I think Beverly Hillbillies is probably in f- that fair use area. I think it's well, if, yeah, it came out in the early '60s, so it could be that he's able to just play the episodes. Yeah, that's what I think he much. did do because they're just long episodes. Anyway, yeah. So I was like, well, I don't ever want to hear any complaints about Mahler anymore. <laughs> like that's that's a a day. I didn't even realize that. I was, <laughs> shit, a day in fourteen hours. Yeah, no, I, I feel like I'm safe now. Uh, <laughs> it gets way longer than I do. So Yeah, my chat, Jeremy's been in the basement too long. He doesn't even know what a day is anymore. That's true. <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, you know, there was an eclipse today. Um, was, I was, yeah. I'm a little disappointed. I thought there'd be some crazy stuff that happened. I really did. I, I didn't say it out loud, but I was like, God, there's going to be some weird cult thing. 
It got to be. And then yeah. there's nothing. Yeah, I was mm. hoping. Open for a mass event. But it happened. Not like, you know, a willing participant one, not one that happened to people, you know. Like, um, um, I was hoping for like a, um, a Heaven's Gate type of thing. Uh-huh. Maybe not where they died, but <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, just not the dying part, but the the little cult bit of culty part. sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a sucker for. I don't think I, I, I think I don't, I don't think I let you answer that. Um, the question before I kept talking like a jerk. Um, this adversarial back and forth now between, you know, essentially, you know, Hollywood has become us versus them, and this is a relatively new thing. I think it, it's a. It starts with like the. I mean, remember the meme? Remember the meme about um, the remake of uh, Charlie's Angels, where it's like the same website prints two articles. Charlie's Angels isn't for white guys, and <laughs> yeah. then they print the next article. It's like, why didn't white guys? He's. Tra-? I mean, I was like, dude, because so. It, what do you think? I'll just shut up. What do you think? I uh, so th- this is the thing. I think everyone's got all kinds of theories on how this has erupted to the point that it is. But that uh, one of the ones I find interesting, maybe as a sort of background hum, is that we solved a lot of the bigger, more significant, horrifying problems of the world, and so now yeah. Yeah. a lot of ones that are, you know, as a broad term, social, have erupted into this is the most important thing that has to be dealt with right now. And then, of course, the irony. I'm one of the f- possibly many. I don't really know. Who would argue that we kind of solved this late '90s uh, controversially, experimentally, but we got it, I think. And if we had maintained it, would have created a world that was uh, much calmer. Where uh, so many of our favorite films from all time can come from this era, and they have all kinds of diverse, if you want to call course. it that, right. casts, and nobody gave a shit. It um, just but existed. now, if you don't give a shit, you're a bad person. As in, like, you need to notice it and celebrate it, which feels so much weirder and it's so much feels so much more backward. Family Matters and um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air were two of my all time favorite shows, like all time. I never thought I was watching a TV show about black people. I was just yeah, watching a show I liked. I know? don't mean to imply we solved all problems. And what I mean to imply, of course, in this very specific and narrow view of how media is created and enjoyed. You know, um, take for example, if if there were a time, name a decade, and there probably was a producer saying we can't have that gay character. Everyone sure. would fucking hate yeah. the show if we put a gay. It's like, oh, that's not that's not great. We, we it would be nice if the if the artist can have whatever character that their story has mm-hmm. been built with or whatever. But I don't th- I don't see how it's uh, equally like like we've flipped back over now to you better make your fucking characters gay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like well, okay, yeah. Um, Meanwhile, it felt like there was a lot of gay or non, non-white, non non-straight, non-male characters that had the spotlight in late 90s, early 2000s that a lot of us, and it would make it into our top characters lists of all time, you know? Yeah, I, and that was when it didn't, you know, we, we, be, we didn't become aware that we were being manipulated or like, not manipulated, that's not the right word, but like we became aware of the system. We became self-aware of, you know, all these you know, not all this nonsense that's going on in Hollywood. Like you said, yeah, there was a time where they wouldn't, they were, they weren't hiring black people and putting them in movies. That's not okay. Um, same thing with gay, gay people or whatever they want to do. I, I mean, I don't think, I don't think anyone's real argument has ever been against their existence in film. It's, it's just when it becomes like this, okay, every character, every show imaginable has a gay character in it. It's like, okay, well, Maybe we went a little too far. Um, maybe we'll come back to a kind of a more normal, natural, I'll say, uh, like a, a little more natural mix of people because the world is diverse, obviously. But this message that like diversity sells is just baloney. It's not true. Um, Indian film cinema seems to do just fine. And it's only Indians in their movies. India, I mean, uh, Bollywood, um, hey, Korean film does just fine. Uh, the biggest show perhaps in, um, you know, in recent memory, Squid Games, you know, not very diverse. Um, it, it starts first with a great show. And, and I think that somewhere along the lines, Hollywood forgot that. And well, I mean, think about Oppenheimer, right? He was, uh, yeah. was criticized for not having a diverse enough cast, but it turns out to be one of the most financially benef- successful films of the year. Yeah, that movie probably didn't have a huge budget, did it? I read uh, an article. <laughs> you know, it did. I read an I read an article somewhere that was pretty genius. Like Christopher Nolan, instead of 
doing like a CGI cornfield. He bought a cornfield and then sold it after the movie for more money, <laughs> just just so they could like film in it. Like hundred million money. budget, but yes, there are that's nothing. Hundred million. I mean, that's well, small. you're um you're on there though. It's like yeah, there there are way cheaper ways to make movies, and I think a lot of people who are in charge of these budgets and in charge of budgeting don't have any fucking clue how to do that. A lot of the veteran filmmakers aren't even getting work in some ways, anyway. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing. I mean, and you end up with like stuff like you know, I don't know if you knew this, but did you know they rebooted "Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead"? <laughs> I've heard about this. <laughs> And did it's, you, it's kind uh, of a hypothetical of like, what do you think they would make as a trailer if they <laughs> rebooted Don't Tell Mom the Babies? It's like, it would be this. Yeah. I I mean, I, I have a feeling you, I mean, so you're saying you weren't one of the people out there begging to have, don't, first of all, this movie did not need to get remade. No. Second of all, it did not need to get uh, race swapped. Um. It's it's like to imply that the only problem with the original movie was that the characters were all white, and so they're like, what I think is hilarious about this trailer is the ver- one of the very first things it says it's like a BET original, like it's not original, like <laughs> you're, you're just remaking an, a film, but with you change the color of the people in it, so this movie's gonna flop. Uh, we can see it has four hundred thumbs up, and I don't know if you can see this, but seven thousand thumbs down. Top comments. Guys, guys, hear me out. Don't tell the mom the babysitter's dead. Pause for effect. But they're black. Like, they did this with the Wonder Years, which I, I think flopped too. I think that was only for like one season. This will get money. I, I think that part of the reason you end up with like, first of all, this, I don't know anything about the people in this film. They might be fine actors. They might be nice people. Uh, the babysitter's an old white lady and dies, apparently. Um, she's like super racist, right? Of course. Of course. Mom, come on. Of course. Well, it's funny you said uh it's this but black when they you know the one of the some of the announcements of like Pirates of the Caribbean, but with women. Yeah. It goes all the way back to Ghostbusters, but with women. Yeah. Uh, Ocean's Eleven, but with oh, women. With and it's like what's what's the and this is the thing. My primary concern, as I imagine a lot of you guys would agree, is that uh, it should be the artists and their their intentions come first. Now, if that means you end up with an artist who says, I'd love to make the fucking whatever, g- gremlins, but they're all black, you'd be like, what the what the fuck right. idea is that? And you don't hire them. Why would you hire that? And, and of course, you can then uh, have the variable in you hire based on experience and their past. Like, why would you give 200 million to someone who hasn't got a proven record? And then of course... <laughs> Good question. You combine all these things and you end up with creating some of the greatest classics of all time. And sometimes you'll get creators who create something amazing on a $1 million budget. And you're like, whoa, get them on, you know, get them on a hundred million one. Yeah. That that was a weird era we went through. Sometimes works, sometimes absolutely doesn't. (laughs) Like, Yeah. Yeah. A lot of flash in the pans. I think part of it starts where like the money. So for a very long time, who knows when this movie was actually made? The trailer just came out, but like, uh, the money was the a lot of times what people don't understand about the film industry that I'm I'm sure you do and I, and you'll put it more eloquently than I will. That there's like a pile of money. It and seems that, that pile, way. Yeah. And that pile of money gets earmarked for certain things that are safe investments. For a very long time, remakes and reboots were safe investments, and hmm. so that's what got greenlit. And when you got to say, oh, we're remaking something plus it's diverse, that will get greenlit. But the fact of the matter is, and with you might know off the top of your head, I can't think of a single solitary reboot that was a financial success in the last. I mean, I guess you could say the first, the Ghostbusters Afterlife, Afterlife was probably yeah. okay. Yeah. Which I thought was a mid movie. I thought Frozen oh, Empire well. was actually poor. I think it did well monetarily, but I actually only recently watched it about, a, uh, I want to say two weeks ago for a drinker having yeah. wanted to talk to me about Frozen Empire. I hadn't seen it, so I w- watched it. I really didn't like it. <laughs> was, uh, Frozen, the first Afterlife or Frozen Empire? Both of them, but I actually didn't like Afterlife more. Oh, yeah. I I did not like, I mean, I thought Afterlife, I am a ghost, like I'm a Ghostbusters guy just like people are Star Wars guys, so I'm willing to like accept a lot more trash than maybe your average viewer. So mm-hmm. my scores will be weighted, you know. But 
I, I, Afterlife was okay. It was mostly like a Stranger Things ripoff. Um, and then uh, Frozen Empire blew ass. It was like a three out of 10 for me. Like, why did they just, how come they didn't bust any ghosts? They didn't bust any ghosts in any of the movies. Like, they yeah. just did a quick cut scene. They, they spent an hour and 45 minutes building up the big bad, which, by the way, did look cool. I thought the, the, the big bad was cool. Sure, and they yeah. just defeated him immediately. Yeah, yeah like, that was boring shit. But um, it does feel like we're relearning how to correctly not entirely enrage the audience. Right? We went through true. a whole era of almost every single reboot pissing it off to, to no end. And it's like, what if we gave you something that didn't just piss all over the thing, but it's still kind of crap? Do you remember this? We used to do this before. Terminator 3 was a really good example. It was a film where we were like, eh, yes. yeah, okay, Meh. yeah, fine. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll accept it, I guess. And I feel like we're almost getting back to that now, where they're like, fine, we'll give you movies that won't piss you off, but they're also just not good. Yeah, that's half of the recipe, I suppose you're right. Like, there's nothing in either of these movies, you know, even like given my world and the stuff I talk about, like, where I'm like, oh, woke, they just weren't very good. Um, and they were like way too reliant on member berries, but oh, yeah, they weren't like disrespectful and they weren't like, um, like you said, like Ghostbusters 2016 actively was like, we don't need the Ghostbusters. <laughs> we don't need that. We're going to do our own thing. And then it was a spectacular flop. That one's almost the poster child for an era because it's just a film that everyone sees it. And it's like, why <laughs> yeah. what possible reason could there be to make that? And one uh, of the there, worst, maybe one of the biggest disasters. I, I know it lost money, but it wasn't as big as like, I mean, Captain Marvel might be the Indiana Jones or Captain Marvel probably yeah. the biggest losses in the modern era and both of them well, well Captain the flash Marvel, too right the flash was huge too but it just had a no that was a big ass budget too that was like 300 mm -hmm. million plus yeah just reshooting all the time yeah probably they really shit that one up too they tied their boat to a guy who fi by the way hollywood's finally cut that guy it yes. seems like they're finally like okay He's been recast and invincible i think i saw so yes they were finally like, okay, he identifies as as unfireable, but then the movie lost two hundred million dollars, and then like, okay, fine, like, <laughs> okay, okay. well, yeah. so that's the crazy thing. We'll get Let's say and this would never happen, but if the Flash had made two billion, like, the, 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 right. crazy hypothetical, uh, they would have been like, all right, we're keeping him, <laughs> like, guaranteed. Yeah. yeah, guaranteed. They would not have gotten rid of him. Yeah, that's. I mean, there there's very few scenarios where. You know, maybe one of the examples I, I on television, there's a show that's popular in the States and it was called. Um, what the hell is it? It was a Tim Allen show where he's like a conservative dad. It was the number one show on the network that it was on CBS or Fox or something. And they cut it because he was like a Republican in the show. They it then went. Chat's probably going to bail me out eventually. But like. Those days are gone now. Not home improvement. Um, I forget what it was. Anyway, what's it's still on right now, I think. Anyway, those days, last man standing. Yeah, thank you. They, they, it was the number one show on their network, I think. Number one or number two. And they just cut it because Tim Allen said they like Trump or some crap like that. And it's like, dude, what were you thinking? Like people don't want so all the people don't know that you cut it for political reasons. They just turn on your TV network and see their show's not. Like that the show's not on there. And it, it's so wild to me that like I do think you're right. I think we're kind of done with that. I think that that money has run out. Like eventually those bean counters are like, all right. Knocking on the door, yeah. Yeah. They're saying, like, come on, you know that happened at Disney. I mean, I mean, it's Disney hasn't put out a movie that has made a significant sum in a very long time. Wish lost money. The Little Mermaid probably broke even. Maybe it made a little bit. But yeah, it I mean, wasn't some like, people say like uh, No Way Home or Guardians, but there's a lot of nuance to both of those. <laughs> that's, yeah, uh, that's important. fair. They're both that's fair to say, but I mean, No Way Home was a long time ago, and it was um, it's Sony's uh, money, not Disney's. Right, it's Sony's money. Guardians didn't even do that good. It, not it, like, not it, only did it not do the numbers of the era their highest, but it's also just 
a lot of that power goes to James Gunn, as much as you could say financially, but that's that's it for Disney. They don't get to use James Gunn again. They don't get to use Guardians again in the same way. When they make an eventual Guardians 4, if they even call it that, or they call it someone else, people are going to be like, oh, it's like a whole different team. Oh, it's by someone I don't even know. Oh. Like, you know. Yeah. Well, it'll be very obvious, too. And it'll probably do okay because Chris Pratt's box office gold. But like... For now, yeah. It depends for on now. what... You know, we never know what is going to happen. There was a theory of like, it's the actor and the character together like a robert downey jr on his own can't make any movie succeed but you can't have iron man without him that's she i'd agree with that the well here's another actor and character that can't save a movie franchise i saw you you tweeted this and as much as it breaks my heart um i'm gonna have to call out keanu reeves <gasps> i love keanu mm -hmm. he is the probably the nicest purest man in hollywood Maybe in 20 years we'll find out he's a horrible bastard. But <laughs> enough with the Matrix movies. The last one was an abomination. Nobody wants to see whatever the hell it is. By the way, to be honest, the order of the best Matrix movies to worse are the, in order that they've come out. Just like John Wick. Like also, bro, Keanu, enough with John Wick. Like the yeah. last John Wick movie was hot garbage. Oh my god! You're like the only other person on the internet that thinks that outside of Efa. Oh, I think. <laughs> okay, it was it was it was a two hour action sequence with absolutely no character building, no back end story, no, and then there's stupid bad guys, a blind guy. Give me a break! And like I just I hated it. I was like, oh, I love it because I love Keanu and he's so kind, and I like Keanu because he doesn't get into politics, but. No more John Wick movies, please, and no more unless you're gonna build a story around it. I'm not paying so, to watch two minutes of or two hours of action movies. I had plenty of that from Stallone and Schwarzenegger in the '90s. I don't yeah, need yeah. any more. They weren't. Uh, I think they were happy to end John Wick if it was financially just okay, but because it did so well, they were like, yeah. "All right, we're doing more." Of this. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, of course you are. Yeah, that's why they mailed it in so hard on that last one. I think, like, it was just. Well. They're like going to the, do another the staircase one. Staircase shit, man. Like a lot of people were sharing. Oh that my together. God, the staircase. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Riggs? I see you in chat. It's been a while hey, since Riggs. I. Yeah, I should have Riggs on. I, I, I haven't talked to him in a while. Yeah, that I, I don't. And like people get offended because people like Keanu, but like, damn, player. Like, I know you're just cashing out, but can you like ca enough? I don't need any more John Wick. I definitely don't want any more lame ass Matrix movies. Like, I don't. It, all every time you put another Matrix movie, it that last one was <laughs> hot garbage. And it's like funny, uh, the conversation the surrounding Resurrections is ah, but don't you know Resurrections was a movie about how it shouldn't be made? Yeah, movie, right. And it's just like yeah, but it was still shit. <laughs> it and he still made anything. it. Well, yeah. There's a lot of movies that are like have a built-in theme or something that people people rely on to say like hey, whoa, 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 you've misunderstood. It's like no, I I, did, I understood. I saw it. It was horrible. Yeah, well, it's the Reddit actually. Yeah. A actually, uh, Debrew that does his last man standing. Oh, yeah, thank you. King of Biltong. Good afternoon from Anton's Meat and Eat. Free shipping on your Biltong with code the Q. BiltongUSA.com and, Anton, uh, and AntonUSA.com. Grab some healthy, high protein Biltong to fill the gap between meals. It's true. I eat Biltong every day. John Wick 3 was off the wall. Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> no, it wasn't. I'm one of the rare people who only likes John Wick 1. I'm not a fan of 2. John Wick 1 was the only good one. I would be inclined to agree, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, the the problem is people like the characters. And people like that John Wick, like, John Wick has been single-handedly keeping Lawrence Fishburne, like, relevant <laughs> for 15 years. By the way, shout out to Lawrence Fishburne and Hannibal. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. That show, that is a show... All right, how about this? What's a, what's a show that early cancellation bothers you the most and you can't say Firefly? I was about to say it's I was going to be the obvious one. Firefly is definitely at the top, but if you remove <laughs> yeah. Firefly, I mean, Hannibal will probably be one of them. That show is up there, uh, right? That was so fucking good. I was so surprised by it. The um the cinematography On regular that show TV is amazing. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not to mention the performances and just having it's like would you like to see Mads Mikkelsen play Hannibal Lecter? It's like, yes. Yes, please. <laughs> Yeah, and it's as good as you'd imagine. Yeah, it was, it was, it was as good or better than anyone could imagine. But it was only was it two seasons or one? Three, three. That oh, that when they go over the cliff, I'm like, man, what an awesome like, damn, that show is good.
And I, I, I think, correct me, you probably know, but I feel like it was like a budget thing. They were like, oh, we can't, because Mads was, pr- you know, he's a pretty big get. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne's pretty big get. Those other people weren't really anybody. It might just not have been, like the view view count just wasn't high enough. Engagement count, you know, like it it wasn't pulling in the kind of viewership that it needs to maintain the budget. It needed it had, to be, yeah. yeah, it needed to be like the number one show they had. That's gonna be another one of those like Firefly, and, and I'm I'm saying like in five years that'll be people be like, oh, dude, did you watch Hannibal? Like, yeah, I watched it at the time, and I was heartbroken. Like Hannibal and Deadwood were like two nut kicks, and then they <laughs> tried to, and then when Dead, Deadwood came back out and put the movie out, and they're like, oh, I didn't see it. I was like, I can't see it. You guys screwed me over after you and you left it hanging. You had a uh, a cliff ended on a cliffhanger. There's a lot of that nowadays, like for you young kids, the young kids out there are used to it all the time. Now it's like famous. Netflix famously does this. But back in the day, it was not that common. Like HBO used to have the show called Carnival, which was actually really cool. Two seasons done. But it was like really rare. They would usually stick them out for like four or five seasons. Now, pff, Look well, at all the Firefly money was painful. Like, there's a reason why that one's known. The, the, yeah. the efforts from fans to get that show back was huge, unprecedented. Got it a movie, which is a very good movie, by the way. But you know, yeah, they got it. A, yeah, that one sucked. Deadwood sucked for me, but Hannibal. I would almost say, like, if I had to pick one show, I'd want like two more good seasons of Hannibal. I wouldn't want it to run on too long. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want them to do a Dexter. Like, they be like, oh, come out the new season Dexter, and it's ass. Like, oh, cool, thanks. Well, I didn't want um, that. To throw in a bit of a monkey wrench, have you ever heard of a show called Awake? Uh, let me look at a picture of it. I think I have. It's with uh, Jason Isaacs. Uh, it's a show? Yeah. Um, no, I, I, f- I feel like I've seen it, but I don't, I, I'm don't. i not seeing the... Um, it it's was, a movie, um, right? Or a show? Show, one season in 2012. And uh, oh, the premise oh. is... We open on a car crash. He's driving with his his wife and his son, and I think his son dies. And so, you know, we we go through the sort of the stuff for that, like a funeral and everything. He goes to sleep and wakes up, and he's now in the world where instead of his son dying, his wife died in the accident. I have not seen that. Is it good? And, Should I watch it? Well, so this is the thing. It's as a premise, like that's interesting. So he runs the same day twice in both worlds, and they just keep deviating but he it's a for him he's like that's insane and he gets over it relatively quickly and instead is just thankful the fact that he still gets to see them both you know Um, as the season progresses we find out that he did not crash the car someone pushed him off road and we find out that uh there's a huge conspiracy in like the place he works he's a cop and um you know there there are events in the season where a case will go bad because you'll get information too late and then he'll run the same day in the other world where you'll have the information ahead of time. So you'll be able to make a different decision and then different results happen. Okay. And so like for one season, I wouldn't say it's great, but there's there's some stuff in there that's like really cool and really interesting. And the ending has some seriously interesting shit happen. And then you find out, yeah, it got canceled and never again will you see. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Oh, sick. There's, yeah, there's there's a bunch of shows. I There was a show I recently watched that I knew it got canceled, but I was like... Okay, well, uh, people say the first couple of seasons it was um, is it Criminal Minds? No, what is it? The it's um Netflix famously canceled it. Chat can probably bail me out. Um, there's a couple. Uh, it's a it's a Netflix show. Yeah, Nef- it was on Netflix and it was like a crime show and it was like a you know uh, um like a slow burn like hunting a serial serial killer thing. It's like building up to. Oh, you talking about Mindhunter? Mindhunter, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I think we're building up to like, um, building up to BTK. I think, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. And then it's just over. I'm like, you bastards! Like, genuinely, dude. Um, because I watched all of it. I was watching it, and I was like, oh, when I when I was watching season one and two, I had the exact same thought of, I don't know if this show's gonna be able to carry on because like I'm glued to it, but I don't know if the average person will be because there's not enough happening. If you know what I mean? Yeah, it's slow burn. Yeah. They needed to do more, and I hate to say this, right? Because I'd rather it be exactly what it needs to be from the artist's point of view, right? Because I know that uh, Fincher was involved with a lot of it, right? If not entirely. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, 
needed to do at least one set of significant interviews per like two, three episodes. And there needs to be some silly thing happen. And when I say silly, I mean like some Hollywood thing, like they escape or they lead to some action packed re revelation about a thing. Instead, it was a very real show. It was very down to earth. We, we got to watch how everything unfolded and how serious everything is and how people work and stuff. And I, I loved all of it, but I was like, I don't know if this will get enough views to continue. And then, you know, when it got canceled, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, that's kind of like dark too. Dark was really is you know another real slow burn, and I think it's a great show, but you almost have to watch it like twice to like catch everything. Most people aren't willing to do all that work. Side note, you know it's a good movie. I saw um, like a it's a subtitled. Mm -hmm. um, now you may say it sucks, but I thought it was. I love slow burn. <laughs> like I like slow burn movies, and so. And like possession movies, even the bad ones. But okay. I just I watched When Evil Lurks. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. It's um, it's it's happens in it, it's Spanish, I think. Um, but it's like uh, watch if you watch the preview. Actually, hold on a second. Do you like um, scary movies? <laughs> oh sure, yeah. Here, I like Scream is... as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, here. Here's the trailer. I'm going to make a recommendation. Can Just you hear it? Uh, knock your stream off or anything, will it? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Rumble on right. my back. Um, can you can you hear it when I played it? Recommendation for a slow burn. Looks interesting, yeah. The premise is that the devil is trying to be reborn. And okay. um, they're trying to like prevent it from being reborn. And um, How's it rank for you compared to other horror films? <sighs> It's um, as as like a thriller horror, like a suspense horror, like um, like uh, I, this is like some I would rank it up with like um, uh, uh, what is that one movie? Um, there's two of them. Uh, where the guy hires somebody to like film him, and uh, Creep. It's like I think Creep one and two are really good as a horror as a suspense like possession movie i'd give it like an eight like it's it's pretty good and the like the jump scares are pretty good um but uh i don't know what popped that in my head oh just good slow burn movies i sure, think i was yeah. thinking of i was thinking of um it's just yeah, one of those mind movies. hunter worked the same way it was very very subtly creepy that's what i yeah that's what it made me think of it mind hunter and like i feel like not enough people see good movies like that because like uh you know even like People like well, it's, Tom it's, Hawk, for example, too. Like, there's a lot of underrated shit, yeah, movies yeah. out there. No, I, I saw that on uh, Redland Media's recommendation. I was quite impressed. I loved the way that movie looked and felt. Um, and it was very, I was about to say creepy, but I was like, no, it's more overt than creepy. There are certain scenes that are just outright. There's some scary. in your face. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There is a a um a scene of separation that I think I will forever remember. Um yes. The there's sound. a scene, yeah. There's a there's a scene like that in that movie that I showed you that you will always remember uh, when you see it. Um, Awake sounds like a really confusing fan fiction based on an early edition. Oh. I can't. Well, it, I, that's fair. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it, yeah, that's fair. The, um, I don't think they handle it perfectly in the show, but it's definitely one where you're like, oh, I would have loved to have given them a chance at season two to see what they could do. In the same vein, um, Mind Hunter would have been really cool to see where they were going to take it. And at the same time, you're like, I understand if it's not pulling in enough money, but it's not like we live in a world where we only see uh, money-making projects rewarded, right? Like, the MCU yeah. is failing, 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 failing. They keep going. Yeah. Like, I think so, um, you know. I think we underrate sometimes, too, the effect of losing DVD sales. Yeah. There's a really smart... I think it was Matt Damon. Did you ever see that interview? Yeah, it was Matt Damon on the Hot Ones, I think, right? Yeah, super smart and insightful. Like, yeah, mediocre films could make it because fans would buy the DVD. And I feel like Mindhunters would be just one of those. Or like the fans would have well, supported I, um, it. Someone I didn't know because I was too young when watching them as they came out, right? But Austin Powers, some of my favorite comedies of all time. Yeah. Uh, we did coverage of it. And Gary was explaining. It was uh, Nerd Roddick was there. He was like, yeah, Austin Powers 1 did not do well in theaters. Just didn't. Oh, and, uh, I don't remember that. It, I remember seeing it, was, it in the theater. But it was DVD sales. They did so well. They were like, let's make another one. Like, people love this shit. It's like, oh, shit. It's just, like you said, it's an avenue for the success where, uh, you know, it doesn't really exist right now, or at least it's uh, dampened significantly. Family Guy, too, right? 
Um, yeah, yeah. That, that show got canceled, brought back because of DVD sales. Um, yeah, and they tried it. They're like, buy the ultraviolet. I'm like, bitch, I'm not paying for a, a DVD <laughs> rip. Like, I, I mean, I'm not going to tell people what to do. But if I'm going to get the movie, I want the disc. I want to be able to play it whenever I want to play it. If you're going to tell me I have to pay you to download something, I mean, I'm not doing it. I'm just, I'm not doing it. Sometimes I'm like, oh man, I, I'm, I've been known to like pay Amazon to rent a movie. Like I, I'm fine with that. Like, oh, it's three bucks or whatever. And this is the only person I can get it. I'm not paying you to own a digital file that you can lock remotely at some point. Futurama is another DVD sales mo- uh, show. Shout out to As Madness. Yeah, that's actually, I think that you need to make like a six hour video on how the death of physical media is one of the is a strong reason for how much for the reason we have so much garbage now because we can't people can't support mediocre films anymore or mediocre tv you know, shows an aspect of it that i think is really true is that there's a lot of films that come out in theaters that all of us will say you know that was a good one i enjoyed that and then a month or two later we're like man that was shit actually and you know yeah. dvd sales can be indicative of that because you're like i ain't buying that nah i'm good but then something else where you're like, I thought it was okay. And then a friend is like, no, it was really good. You have 200, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you watch it and you go, actually, this was actually really good. Yep. Yeah, I'll buy, I'll buy the physical for that. Yeah, sort of thing. It's just like that whole process is practically dead. I used to work at Walmart in electronics. And I would work when all the new movies came out. I put the new movies out every, it was, I worked Monday night, Tuesday night. I think new movies came out on Tuesdays, I think. And then video games were Thursdays. It was a long time ago, but dude, I mean, I would, and I used to do the same shit. I would go and I would like, oh, I remember seeing that in the theater, like just walking up and seeing it for sale on the shelf. Like, oh, I remember wanting to see that. I'll buy it. It's eleven ninety nine. You know, like mm-hmm. when it's like, maybe not when it's twenty nine or twenty dollars, but when it was like you'd see it for nine ninety nine or you know whatever. I'd be like, oh, I'll buy that. And um, that just whole form of discovery of movies, like I used to do on on Black Friday, but no, because I never had cable when I was. We, you know, when I was not, when I was younger, well, I was still living on my own, but like I couldn't afford HBO. So I would always wait. I would get all the shows from HBO when they were like on DVDs. So I'd get Oz, all the d- episodes of Oz on DVD or Carnival, or that's how I found all these shows. Deadwood. I bought them, I bought DVD box sets. And now, like, I don't even, I don't have that option. I just have well, to be that, full. Um... You remember Hot Fuzz, right? There's that there's that part of the movie where he opens up his collection to a friend and it's this, you know, room of shelves and stuff. And that wasn't too unusual for me and a lot of my friends who'd be like, Yep, that's that's a normal thing. But these days I don't know how normal it is. Yeah, I don't I, I mean you have to really work to get like, you know, physical media. And a lot of it isn't even available on that anymore. But that was a hundred percent like trading movies with friends. Like mm-hmm. that was a thing that I did all the time. You know, you can borrow my Matrix DVD, which is the first DVD I ever owned. Matrix and Blade. I bought both. And um, I still love both of those movies. They still hold up. Blade's a little cheesier now, 20 years later. But the original Matrix still holds up pretty good. Um, yeah, no, I I have a lot of love for those films. And, you know, I mean, it's not long before we'll see the newer versions of both of them. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, the, the Blade one's going to be just a hot... Not even rated no R. Think, yeah. Everyone I mean, keeps getting fired. That's <laughs> what are they doing? Like listen, okay. The the good part is that everyone will rewatch Blade. And yes. We can talk good. about that. So that'll happen at least. I think that's another series too. Like the best, like Blade was the best. I know there were sequels. They weren't very good. Um, well, nobody likes Blade Trinity, right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody likes that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and I just want to remind everyone who's watching, cause I know I said, I'd get you out of here in an hour and I usually hang out after, cause I know it's a big commitment. Um, I'm joined by, uh, Mahler and his channel. He's on YouTube. I, I will try to bully him to upload his stuff to, to rumble too, <laughs> but his, he's got one channel, which is linked below. It's Mahler YouTube. It's you'll see the link. Um, this is some deep dive, great stuff. Like you just really long, entertaining content. This is why people don't watch TV shows anymore because guys like Mahler put this long, thoughtful stuff out. He also has his show, EFAP, um, which comes out. I mean, it's basically every couple of days, right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or something like that. Main show is weekly, but yeah, we try and do uh, 
some supplementary something on a Wednesday, and then we have catch ups and stuff throughout. So almost one to three days, sort of like that. Yeah. Okay. So check out that channel, and then obviously you can find him on on Twitter at Mahler ninety three. Also linked in the description below. Man, this has been really a great conversation. I don't think we've ever talked before. Maybe we did. Uh, uh, (laughs) Yeah, like we've lived in the same circle for, we've both been making videos for a very long time and our paths have never crossed. And, um, you know, I do appreciate the work that you do and, um, and I I appreciate the, the insight and thoughtfulness in your content. So I appreciate you coming on and uh, let's not make it another 10 years (laughs) <laughs> until, until we hang out again no i appreciate it as well then it's been a it's been a fun conversation and yeah well i'll happily come on again sometime um i try and get around the internet you know with, with everybody i like talking to people i like talking about media yeah yeah perfect perfect uh everyone make sure you follow follow mauler check out his show efap linked in the description follow him on twitter send some uh send some positive vibes his ways and then um you will talk again soon dude absolutely sir thank you very all much. right See ya. That was Mahler. Uh, Lucas or Luis says uh, that gives me witch vibes. The witch vibes. Yeah, there are some of that. Mimic Live said you should check out the trailer for Handling the Undead. Okay, I'll check that out. Um, the brew that do says Little Quiet could use some barking dogs or an ad read for Coffee Brand Coffee. <laughs> Lord of the Re. Oh, I got that one. Um, yeah, I know that like I I know that like the politics stuff people do tune in for, but I don't want to put Mueller in like a weird spot where like he had to talk about divisive politics because that's not really his thing. So I tried to just stay to that, you know. Is this a new shiny version of Stargrift? Yeah. Jeremy, do you have a Plex server? I don't, but a friend of mine does. Um. Uh, did, did did I talk to Kirsha? Yes, I'm gonna have her on maybe this week. Um, probably sh- I did DM her. We talked uh, earlier today, so I, I suspect that we'll have her on this week. We've got Melanie Mac tomorrow. I've got a surprise fill in host Wednesday. Sticks is traveling, so I have decoy voice coming on Wednesday and then um, Thursday, Melanie Mack again. And then Friday, maybe we'll do Kirsha. That might work. What's up, EJ Paladin? So we actually like, we've got a pretty, yeah, sticks dipping already. I know. The uh, don't forget to ask Kirsch about sounding after the bridge stuff. Okay, yeah, we've got pretty a pretty good lineup this week. It I always like to do this at least once per show. If you're new to the show, uh, definitely say hi in the chat. I missed your super chat. Let me double check. Did I? Uh, Analog Mind says, at last, the long quarter. <laughs> uh, Steve Z says, watch Snack Shack. Darth Gorbag says, you need a secretary again. They could handle your emails and stuff so you don't have to worry about forgetting to message Doomcock. Yeah, I do. she starts this. She should be in tomorrow. Ministry of Ron says Avatar Way of the Water made money, but Disney literally acquired it in the Fox deal by it was it was literally years into production. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. If you uh cocktail, I didn't miss yours, did I? What do I think from of Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers? A nice guy. Doctor, never forget the name Ironheart and the rough concept of female Iron Man was totally stolen from a Japanese Iron Man porn movie parody. That's right. Never forget. <laughs> That's funny. 
I keep saying I'll only come when Mel is here, but Jeremy keeps luring in with these titles. Uh, yeah, well, she'll be here. Lol, not a cat. I read yours. Stop, stop trolling me. I know I read yours. Doobie doobie doo. Wait, did I? I don't think you super chatted. You fooled me. You fooled me. Oh, there it is. I never thought we'd see a time that where nearly every legacy franchise from my child has been killed. I have little hope for Beetlejuice and Fallout, but I won't hold my breath. Uh, yeah, Beetlejuice. Not loving some of the early stuff I'm seeing. Um, Fallout. I'm not a hardcore Fallout person, so like my heart won't be broken. If, uh, you know, if it sucks, but I just don't know how it could be good. Jeremy, do you grow any food or hunt anything? Yes, I grow lots of food and I hunt lots of things. I live on a large property that has a healthy turkey population, a very healthy deer population. Grow a lot of vegetables. Wasn't Fallout looking woke AF? Um, yeah, I mean, it's tough. I want to give it a you know a chance. Um, I, I would say that there's very little chance it's going to be great. It's going to have a lot of cringe girl bossing in it. I just I just have a feeling. Sounds like you need a Massey Ferguson trailer. I've got a Kubota trailer, 60 horsepower. That thing can do anything I need to I need it to do. 60 horsepower tractor. Perfect. We need more Deadwood from the writer and director of first season or pass. Yeah, it's yeah, hundred percent girl boss. That's the vibe I got. You know. We'll see. Yeah, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are gonna be bad this year, and so cicadas are really bad. Wildly. Bar One Piece, most of the live action adaptations we've had in the past year have been utter garbage. Yeah. I keep going back to saying, like, is that a Kubota 47 LE? No, it's 6060, right? I think 6060. The 47 LE is 47 horsepower. The journalist thing, I wanted to mention, I was going to talk about it, but then um, I didn't want to make him like get political. You know, I want to try to keep my guests comfortable in their comfort zone. Um, Congrats on the weight loss. Keep it up, dude. Thanks, Jacob. I'm back on it. I backslid. I backslid. I gained like seven pounds back. So I'm back. I'm back on it hard now, starting today. The the article was that ridiculous. I'll pull up the article. Uh, Ron Coleman. I double booked. Um, hold on a second. All right. I don't, I screwed up an appointment when I had with Ron Coleman. Did you watch WrestleMania? I did not. I've I've I liked wrestling when I was young. I was really into it, but not so much anymore. So this article was men punching random whim, random women in New York City, a desperate last gasp from the male rage fueling mega.
I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, if I show you the mug shots of the, of the men that they've arrested thus far, it is uh, not mega. It's just that anything that they can do to put mega in the headline, I, I guess, I, I don't really understand what the, what the logic is for this or how, you know, how you justify it. The entire article was complete and utter nonsense, like complete nonsense. I noticed that today there wasn't a lot of people online today. Do you think it was, is it like a holiday or something? If you use a bunch of weight, I'll have to stop watching. I won't feel represented anymore. Well, don't worry about that. Oh, the rapture. That's where everyone was. I'll try to convince Mahler to get on Rumble. Yeah, it's 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 the knockout game. It's young black men doing this. That I mean, that's the long and short of it. Look at this. The same freaking day this article comes out, right? Like, young black men were knocking out Asian people like hotcakes. Remember the remember the whole. Remember when they tried to say. Uh, remember when they tried to say, oh, um, hashtag stop Asian hate. <laughs> no, I'm in heaven now. How's it down there? It's getting warmer. Probably connected to the eclipse. Uh, many families and people just going outside to observe and not back yet. I mean, I'm thinking maybe. Do you remember all the stop Asian hate crap? Well, you know what happened when, yes, Lance, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how fast that shit went away? People are like, oh my God, Asians are getting beat up in the streets just for being Asian? Who's doing this? Oh, never mind. Never mind. Just kidding. Never mind. By the way, just kidding. Awesome to see a nice crowd tonight on the uh, secret YouTube channel. Or if you're watching on Rumble, the true home of my channel, the absolute best way you can support me is by joining my locals if you're a Rumble user or joining as a member if you're a YouTube user. It's five bucks a month and uh, it goes to help offset the cost of my two video editors, my thumbnail graphics guy, and now my um, booker so that people can, uh, so I can get more guests on the show. Yeah, a certain demographic did the assault. So yeah, that's what I'm saying, Willie. Once they found out who was doing it, suddenly the left didn't care about the Asians anymore. If the follow button says follow, it is being rude and you need to slap it. Only once is appropriate. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They tried to blame it on white supremacy and then all of a sudden hundreds of videos came out and it was all young black men doing it. And they're like, ah, ah, ah whoops. Whoops. How much coffee do I have to buy to be sure your grifting isn't directed at me? Just wondering, because I think I just spent $100. Hey, I appreciate your business. You buy my coffee, that's that's great. That's actually the best. Because I think I'd rather, I'd always rather give people a product for their money than, than just say like, money, please, you know? And like, if you buy a bag of coffee, I make like three or four bucks. So it's pretty close to the same. I make about the same and you get coffee for it. So that's good too. Can you, you could tell nobody hit them in the face at all anyway. It's just for clout because there's no way a woman will get hit in the face by a man unless it had nothing but a love tap. 
I mean, the the there were all these TikTok girls like faking it. You know, I think personally, but you know, like, oh my god, I just got hit. But it does happen. It's like on camera. There was a video of like this black guy hit like this old Korean woman, and then uh, five other black guys jumped him and beat him up for it. You know, shout out to them. Good for them. That should be what happens. Considering all the BS from Fresh and Fit this week, I have to ask, does Myron, is Myron Gaines gay? I guess I don't know. I, I don't know. And the thing is, like, it's cool if he is. I don't care about that. Just don't tell men to take accountability and then don't take accountability for yourself. That's all. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to jump off tonight. Tomorrow, we'll have the full show with Melanie Mack. Lots to talk about. Uh, we can get you know a little more spicy with uh, Melanie tomorrow. So we've got that going for us tomorrow. Make sure you follow if you're watching on Rumble or subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Tomorrow, 5.30 Eastern, we'll be live again. To all the people, for all the people left on earth who weren't raptured today. We'll see you guys.